Welcome to this edition of Back Nine Report TV. This week, we will explain how to enjoy the best golf courses in the world and never leave your hometown. The Evans Scholars Program helps kids learn life skills and a college education. I ran about the USGA and video replay, but first we have a story out of Yuma, Arizona about two PGA professionals working to bring golf to veterans and the physically impaired. Kathy Gildersleeve Jensen is a PGA teaching professional and was the PGA of America's 2014 National Teacher of the Year. She has teamed with another PGA professional, Mark Croft, who is also the director of golf at Las Barrancas Golf Course to bring adaptive golf to the Yuma, Arizona area. Mark lost his lower right leg due to an infection in early 2016 and is just beginning to attempt playing golf again. Both Mark and Kathy became certified through PGA HOPE and PGA REACH programs to provide instruction to veterans with disabilities. It is their mission to help improve the lives of veterans in the Yuma area through golf. They recently visited the range and Kathy was working with Mark on the best method to maintain balance, but successfully complete a golf swing even though Mark has a prosthetic right leg. Hi, my name is Kathy Gildersleeve Jensen and the 2014 PGA National Teacher of the Year and this is Mark Croft. He's the director of golf here at Las Broncas Golf Complex here in Yuma, Arizona. And we're doing some adaptive golf work with him. So we want to kind of, I'm, we're doing a lesson. We're experimenting with him since he lost his leg. And he lost it from the top part, right? Yeah, above the knee. Above the knee. And so we're kind of experimenting with getting him to swing the golf club because he's just start, starting to get back into golf again. He's been a golf pro for many years, uh, but recently, about maybe eight months ago, he lost his leg. So now we're at this point where we can get him back into the swing again. So we're doing a little lesson. Thought you all might want to hear what we have to say and uh, see if we can get him swinging some more. So we're going to work with him. So I'm going to have what we've done here. Uh, we've kind of experimented a little bit on... Uh, alignment since he doesn't have balance so we were having some issues being the feet being super super straight down our target line but he couldn't get his balance so we're experimenting by having his feet angled like this and the hips angled it has nothing to do with his swing plane because this is all about his balance so why don't you get kind of set up first yeah one of the problems that we were having was when we were in a more traditional stance like uh, this. And shoulders more parallel to the target line. I couldn't keep the club on plane. I was always coming outside, outside, outside. So Kathy came up with the idea that we take me, and we did this the other day with an iron and it worked out fantastic. Take me and turn me about 45 degrees to the target line. Okay, so now, as you can see, I'm aimed well left, but when I come to my address position, I just bring my front shoulder back, and now I'm parallel to the target line again. So the hips, the hips and the feet don't matter about the alignment, um, only because that's all about balance. But the shoulder turn, since the shoulder turn is very important about keeping it on the swing plane, that if, because that's more of the, the hub of the wheel for his uh, circle, and if he can get this hub of the wheel going, it won't matter how his hips or his feet are going, so that he, all that is about balance. It's not about during the swing or anything, but his motion is all up on the top side, so we want that a little bit more down the line, like that. Okay. See, we're gonna try a few swings out and see how you do. Okay. And then, uh, that's kind of, yep. Uh, we also put in a, a more lofted driver, a little shorter driver. Holy smoke, look at that. <laughs> do well with camera. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was awesome. So, 
That was fantastic, man. It's probably, I don't know. It, I mean, it's not much. It's 165, 175. But you weren't doing that yesterday, so I can I can go and play any golf course I want from the forward tees with with that driver. Any and that, course. And, and if you can't see that on camera, that was a bullet straight down uh, down his shoulder target line. Had nothing to do with his hips or his feet, but his circle, everything went down there. The ball went straight. He just tatered that one. <laughs> that was awesome. 2014 Teacher of the Year, what can I say? I have had the opportunity to work with golfers with various disabilities and can attest there are several ways to hit a golf ball and a golf swing can be adapted to fit each individual in any physical impairment. The most important issue for the golfer is a desire to learn. Golf is truly for everyone. It will allow them to be outside and provide hours of exercise and enjoyment. Congrats to all of the teaching professionals around the country that are working to bring the game to physically impaired golfers. Carlos Torres and Fred Altgater bring you the best golf news and information every week on the Back Nine Report. They cover anything and everything golf, from the professional tours to the major events. They also cover parts of golf that other shows don't and give their unique perspective and insight on current golf topics. Listen to Back Nine Report live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Blog Talk or download it anytime on TuneIn. If you live in the northern portion of the United States but are dreaming of a warm golf getaway to a sun-drenched golf course lined with palm trees and don't have the cash to buy a plane ticket, one great way to get in a few hacks is to visit one of the many new golf simulator retail establishments. Golf simulators have sprung up in retail facilities all over the country. They even have leagues, skin games, and scramble tournaments to make things interesting. One of the indoor golf simulator facilities in my hometown even had a season-long closest to the pin contest last season. Using the famed Island Green number 17 at TPC Sawgrass for a chance to win a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. The simulators allow you to dial up famous courses that you've only seen on TV and still get a few swings in while frigid winds blow the snow around outside. Many of these facilities offer food and adult beverages so you don't even have to wait for the cart girl. Just walk over to the counter between shots and refill your mug. One other benefit of the indoor simulators is the ability to dial up the range function and just hit balls as you would on the driving range. The main benefit here is that with every shot, the computer will show your swing speed, launch angle, spin rate, carry and roll. Illustrations of your face angle are also shown on the screen and can help you square your club face at impact. It's a little like getting a track man or flight scope fitting, but you can do it on your own time and learn as you go. Golf is one of the best exercises in the world. Even though you can't get outside and play, everyone can exercise in their home or office and stay golf ready for when the snow melts next spring. NWO Golf Links is published every month and delivered to your email inbox. A variety of golf writers offer their unique views on all aspects of golf, travel, tips, information, health, exercise, equipment reviews, and much more are available in NWO Golf Links. Sign up for your free copy at nwo.back9mediagroup.com. The Evans Scholars Foundation provides full college scholarships for caddies that meet the criteria of financial need and scholastic accomplishment. Chick Evans was a successful amateur golfer who won the 1916 U.S. Open but was unable to accept prize money or endorsement opportunities personally and still maintain his amateur status. His mother had the idea of a charitable foundation which would receive any remuneration Evans would receive from his golf. Evans was a former caddy himself who struggled to attend college. He wanted his foundation to provide college scholarships for worthy caddies. The first caddies were from the Chicago area and attended Northwestern University. In the hundred years since, Evans Scholars now funds full ride scholarships including room and board to over 900 former caddies 
and have a goal to reach 1,000 by the year 2020. The stories of the young people that the Evans Scholars Program has helped over the years is truly inspirational. Here is one such story. Zach Selick, a young man from a broken home, wound up in a foster care and was looking for ways to earn an income in the summer months. He stumbled upon McHenry Country Club in the northern suburbs of Chicago. He joined the caddy program at McHenry, and upon learning about the Evans Scholar Program, set a goal of earning one for himself to attend Purdue. Here's a short video provided by Evans Scholars about Zach's journey. When I started Kenny McHenry Country Club, they said, hey, this is an opportunity for you. If you can pull this off, it'd be life-changing. It all started with my mom physically abusing us. That caused a divorce between my parents. My dad struggled with that divorce and eventually fell into alcoholism. It took a toll on me and my siblings. Is our dad gonna be okay? Are we gonna have food tonight? What's not gonna make him mad? What's not gonna make him drink? He ended up incarcerated, which forced me and my siblings to end up with my family members, but they no longer could take care of us, so we went to the foster care system. It was really hard for us to get through. Zach and his sister and his brother came to visit one weekend to see if, you know, they wanted to come here and if they would be a good fit. And uh, we had a great weekend. It was a lot of fun, and they decided that they thought it would be a good fit for them too, so they moved in. We felt we felt safe here. When he first moved in, he was very shy, um, reserved, kind of didn't really want to engage with people. Okay, off we go. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> no problem. The way the story goes, Zach saw a sign about McHenry Country Club and he needed a job. So he investigated himself, came in here, learned a little bit about caddying, passed the exam with flying colors, and he's been uh, working ever since uh, that time uh, here at McHenry as a caddy. Caddying was a place where I knew I had another family away from home. I had to learn the game of golf, and that was a challenge in itself, especially when you're a kid that's never played the game before and you're coming in with no knowledge. Caddying is important because it offers young men and women the opportunity to work in what we think is the best summer job for kids. Caddying really made me a better person. I had to be appropriate around other people. I had to have my manners. I had to be sociable. So we want to get to the 100, so we'll hit it 200, 200. all right? He didn't leave the house for like the first year unless it was school. Now he's just really a different person. He's, I mean, he's ready to launch into, into his world now. Well, Zach is an exceptional young man at our country club. He has surely overcome many challenges to get where he is today. And I remember the first time he came home and he's like, I'm getting the Evans Scholar. So the Evans Scholarship really does change lives. It enables so many young men and women to be able to get to universities that they would be unable to afford. The Evans Scholarship provides full tuition and housing grants to caddies across the country. We have 935 scholars in school beginning this fall. I can't tell you how many mothers and fathers have come up to me and given me a hug and told me with tears in their eyes how important this scholarship was to them and their family. When I found out I got the scholarship, it was a euphoria that I will never forget for the rest of my life. He wouldn't have been able to go to Purdue without a scholarship. There's, there's just no way we could have afforded it. The whole purpose of the Evans Scholarship is scholarship leading to leadership. I've really noticed it with Zach because he's such a leader here at our country club. The important piece for him of coming out of the foster care system is to be able to heal and tell his story because I tell him all the time, your story is powerful. I definitely feel proud of what I've done, but I do not feel that I am done yet. Not a lot of people get this opportunity. I have to give back because it's not about taking everything that the world has to offer. It's about making sure the world is a better place. I really think the, uh, the sky is the limit. I know that he's going to be a very successful person. He's going to be a, a citizen that we're all going to be very proud of. Zach is just one of hundreds of stories of young people that become caddies and find a path that will serve them well for a lifetime. Whether or not 
you are looking for a college scholarship for your child or just want him or her to be involved in a summer job that will teach them communication skills and gain confidence for everything they may pursue in life, check out the Evans Scholarship Program and what clubs near you promote the Evans Scholarship for their caddies. From time to time on this show, I will take the opportunity to open the I've had enough and I just can't take it any longer files. We are now over six months removed from Dustin Johnson not only tackling a very difficult Oakmont golf course as well as the rest of the field at the U.S. Open last June, but he was also forced to beat the USGA rules officials as well. I personally hate the use of super slow motion cameras and reviewing a shot from various angles, then using that video to affect play or assess penalties after the fact at golf events or any sporting event for that matter. Replay abuse doesn't just apply to golf. The usage of video review is completely out of control in every sport. They're making baseball and football nearly unwatchable. Plus, the officials on the field are afraid to make a call, blow a whistle, or stick their neck out. It's not within the confines of the spirit of any game and needs to be drastically altered. But I digress. Back to golf. Dustin Johnson's golf ball was deemed to have moved a dimple on the fifth green, even though he had not addressed it. The USGA video police took it upon themselves to inject their brand of wisdom into the proceedings. But they had to confer, discuss, and rewatch it a couple hundred times. Johnson was not notified of the pending one-shot penalty until he was standing on the 12th tee. That is over six holes and one and a half hours after the alleged penalty had occurred. Despite arguments from Johnson's playing partner, Lee Westwood, who, by the way, is responsible to protect the entire field and the USGA rules official following the group that no penalty had occurred, the USGA, in their infinite wisdom, told Dustin on the 12th tee that a penalty may have occurred. May have occurred. They couldn't even tell him straight on the tee and they clearly had made up their minds. You could see it in the interview with Fox Sports. Here is the USGA's official statement after the tournament concluded. Upon reflection, we regret the distraction caused by our decision to wait until the end of the round to decide on the ruling. It is normal for rulings based on video evidence to await the end of a round when the matter can be discussed with the player before the scorecard is returned. While our focus on getting the ruling correct was appropriate, we created uncertainty about where players stood on the leaderboard. Social media went crazy after the incident, and the overwhelming sentiment was with Johnson and against the USGA. Rules and video review errors by the USGA were not limited only to the men. The USGA made another controversial ruling when Anna Nordquist was assessed a penalty for touching the sand with her club while involved in a playoff at the U.S. Women's Open with Brittany Lang a couple weeks after the men's tournament. The infraction occurred while in a bunker on number 17 during the playoff. The USGA did not inform Nordquist of the penalty until after she had played her third shot to the green at the final playoff hole. Lang learned of the penalty before she attempted her third shot at the same hole and played more conservatively. Knowing the situation for Norquist, it affected how she played. The USGA's handling of the penalty situation at the U.S. Women's Open overshadowed the great win by Brittany Lang, one of only two wins for American women on the LPGA Tour all year and the defining moment of her long career. Dustin Johnson, who appeared to be in the zone that week at Oakmont did not let the impending penalty disrupt his brilliant play. He did bogey the 14th after the on-course discussion with the USGA, but then finished par, par, par birdie to claim the three-shot win over Jim Furyk, Shane Lowry, and Scott Piercy. This whole mess was inexcusable, and the USGA's response has been to change the rule about inadvertent movement of the ball on the green to hopefully avoid the Dustin Johnson situation in the future. 
Because the USGA and the RNA only make official changes to the rules every four years, and they just updated the rules of golf at the beginning of 2016, the rule is deemed to be a local rule and only at this point. Step meter readings approaching 15 on greens that were meant to be at nine and ridiculous course setups like the travesty at Chambers Bay in 2015 will continue to create problems for the USGA until they wise up. Lang's big win was tarnished due to the unfortunate ruling for Nordquist. In all the commotion surrounding the USGA ruling at the U.S. Open, it was lost that Dustin Johnson exercised his demons of past major championship mishaps and performed magnificently on one of the most difficult golf courses in the world. The USGA is rapidly becoming a joke among casual golfers. They need to change their video review policies and procedures to prevent these types of rule problems from arising in the future. That wraps up another edition of Back Nine Report TV. We hope you enjoyed our show and we'll tell your friends to check us out right here on Roku. Until the next time, we hope you keep it in the short grass and we'll catch you on the Back Nine.